all, it's Russell back and on today's video I am going to be showing you how to remove the fuel tank so that you can replace either your fuel pump or fuel sending unit. And we're going to be using the 89 Chevy K1500. I've got it nicely settled here in the garage. It's pretty cold outside, at least for me. If you've guys been watching the channel, you know I do not like cold, but it's in the 40s right now. The reason that I'm doing this is because my fuel gauge is wonky. And that is a technical term. 99% of the time, it is the fuel sending unit that is part of the pump assembly in the tank. Now, I can tell that somebody has replaced this sometime in the past. I suspect they probably used a cheap uh, assembly, probably a doorman or some garbage like that. Don't do that. This is not... This job's kind of a pain in the butt, and you don't want to have to keep doing it every couple of years. That just don't make sense. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fill hose. As you can see, the um, large hose right there, I'm just going to remove that connection, that uh, clamp, and then... All right, so the next thing is I've got a my uh, transmission jack underneath the tank. And I'm going to take a 15 millimeter socket so I can get situated and remove this tank strap right here. This is the rear tank strap. All right, so there are, get some light here. There are four bolts that hold the front bracket that also holds the fuel tank up. They're here, 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 and here. They're just studs, and I'm just gonna remove the nuts. Just run the nuts off. That's pretty much it. So I've got the weight of the tank on the transmission jack here. And what I'm going to need to do is, as I do this, I'm going to need to push that bracket away from the frame slightly. And that's really all that holds this in. Okay. So the tank is now free from the bracket here. All right, so getting a little bit of room having the tank down I was able to um, remove the filler right here was I removed the vent hose right here and I unplugged the connector here now there are still three other hoses that need to be removed um, but this is the issue you will have as you can see the tank well, maybe you can't. Um, the studs right here will hit the frame. So I've got to uh, let it down some more and kind of tilt the tank down in order to clear the, uh, the studs right here. Right up in here is the 13 millimeter ground bolt, and I'm going to have to remove that because I can't do two things at once here. like that's also a 5 8 okay
All right. There we go. There we go, just like that. So I don't have any rust or anything on the tank, but what I am gonna do is I need to replace these. These are um, starting to dry rot. So I'm gonna replace this. I'll replace this, of course, this assembly uh, with the tubes gonna get replaced. And then uh, I'll show you guys how to do the uh, fuel filter when I get it. But yeah, this is it and see, this is the uh, factory GM part, and it's just, it's not, I don't want to reuse that. America. Hmm. Not cool. M013089-KV-BR um, And then it says On this side All right, so we're back on day two. I've got the um, Pump and fuel filter or I'm sorry pump and fuel pump assembly. I've got a brand new uh, Napa gold filter and this is the, if your pump still works like mine does, this is the easiest way to get the rest of the fuel out of the tank. I just hooked the line back up. It's got the fuel filter attached to it. And I've tightened everything up. And I took a uh, lawnmower battery and I've got the ground to the ground. And <clears throat> I didn't have another probe with a clamp, so a neat trick that you can do is to take the probe you've got this goes on a multimeter and then just use a file clamp and that will allow you to clamp this to the battery post nice and stable so now we have this energized and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the white wire it'll be the one on the end and just energize it So there's a white wire, there's a purple wire in the middle, and then there's a black wire with a white stripe. So I'm just gonna do this until the tank is empty, and that'll make uh, reinstallation much easier. Then I'm just gonna take the uh, when I fill that up, I'm gonna put it in my container there and we'll reuse it when we get the tank back in the truck right there, but yep. So when I get this assembly cleaned off and removed, then um, hopefully there won't be anything in this tank. The tank is not rusted and it's in really good condition. So we'll just have to see. All right, so you wanna know if your filter is doing its job? Well, I poured the contents of what was in the filter backwards and this is the junk that's in there so yes there's going to be stuff in the tank for sure but it was um, really really good to see that it's um, filtering every bit of that out so hopefully the tank's not too too bad all right, so I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but I'm getting some of this debris on my finger and it just disintegrates. So what it's not is it's not rust, I don't think, because rust would, flakes of rust would not um, disappear like that. I'm thinking it's just dirt. This is the original tank. So there's almost 40 years worth of crud in there, so. Yep. All right, so I cleaned around the entry point here in the tank as best I could. I also uh, used a pick in here and I sprayed it out with compressed air and used a, um, like a steel wool or a um, 
wire brush. So the idea here is this ring in the center right here slides around. So there's tabs on this side and then there's inner tab here. This inner tab is what you want to uh, use a screwdriver or a punch and hit with a hammer and that will spin this ring around and it will release the pump. So let me uh, see if I can do this. See how it slides around? Should be three tabs. So whatever you do, make sure, like I said, to not hit the outside tabs. Okay, so when you get to the area where there's this large, there's three like fingers made into the tank, the, uh, the locking ring will just pop up. Now before I take this out, there is a seal under there, but I want to squirt it with some compressed air. Okay. And then this just lifts out like that. So it may not seem like it'll fit, but it, it will. You can just squeeze these pipes just a little bit. And then there's a sock, like a little internal filter. And then you got the uh, float right there. Yeah, this thing is nasty. See that? So I don't know how well you can see in here, but this is really neat. Um, the tank is really clean inside. There's this plastic baffling that the, uh, the pickup tube sits in. Um, there's quite a bit of fuel still in here. It's, uh, mostly at the, at the front. So, um... Yeah, that's probably a couple gallons in there. There's a little bit of debris in there, but it's hardly anything. So what I thought was uh, dirt right here is not, this is kind of like a gluey type substance. I suspect that when they, this looks like it may be um, some type of like a pipe dope that they put on from the factory, but it's definitely not, it's not dirt. I had to take a pick and try to to get it off but i'm just going to leave it be i'm just going to make sure the surface where this o-ring sits right here is uh is in good shape all right so um i think what i'm going to do is just leave that amount of fuel in there um i don't know if you guys can no, that's not going to work can't get the camera down there but it's really pretty cool like a plastic uh like a baffle a little bit enough to where um it's starting to go in position and i will attach all the hoses so let me show you what i did under here earlier got all the hoses ready to go I put a brand new fuel filter on um yeah so this is the part that if you had somebody to help you, it would be great, but I don't. So uh, there is a little bit of flexibility in these hoses here. So you know, I'm just going to make the best of it. It's not the uh, funnest job to do, but I'm going to make sure that my electrical connector is up here so it won't get lost in the mayhem and uh, that just screws down right there and then that's uh, the ground strap goes there also so all right so let me set the uh, camera up and we'll just do a time lapse
All right, so I had to change plans. So what I had to do was I kept having the cooler hose slip off. So I went ahead and disconnected the filler neck assembly, took it off, went ahead and put the, uh, the large filler neck um, vent and got that up on there on the top of the tank. I didn't take it off that way because lining everything up has been a bit of a challenge. So um, it really helps to have two jacks and this thing, this front jack has been indispensable right here because it allows me to keep the tank pretty level. There is some fuel in here. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you can empty the tank completely. I think there's about five gallons of fuel in here, but I have gotten this up and over i've gotten that over the uh the frame here remember there's studs right here i've gotten it just enough to where i don't know if you can even see this it's really dark this is terrible for filming but um, i've gotten enough room where i can get my hand up in here the question is will i be able to get the wrenches in there um i think i may be able to do that from the top maybe i don't know i probably may have to let it down again but anyway, the main goal is to get it, get the fuel lines connected, and then um, I may have to drop the tank down just a little bit enough to get the wrenches in there. And I don't know how much the time lapse is going to show because it's really dark. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'm just going to uh, show you guys what it looks like when it's all back together. A working fuel gauge all right so this is a uh, it's about a week later from when I finished the fuel tank removal and pump and fuel sending unit video the uh, works great I mean just as you would expect I do have to say one thing if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a job like that, please use a quality pump, quality parts. The uh, the pump itself cost about two hundred some dollars from Napa, and it's the OEM Delphi unit. So whoever had done this job before I got the truck, they put in one of those cheap, probably uh, big box store. I'm not gonna name who it was because I don't know exactly where they got it from, but. You know what we're talking about. One of those cheap pumps that cost about $60. Don't do that. Um, it's really a pain to do this job. It's not hard. It's just a pain. That pump will probably last another 15 or 20 years as long as there's not any, any water or anything that gets in the tank. So anyway, uh, hopefully this video will inspire you to do the job yourself. Doesn't matter whether you've got a Chevy K1500, a Honda Accord, Toyota Tundra, the job's not really hard. If you've got a passenger car, you may be able to just pop off the um, rear seat. And a lot of times, like on Hondas, they have an access port where you don't even have to drop the tank. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much what it is. I hope you guys find that video and found the video useful and maybe a little entertaining watching me struggle with some of the stuff. But Hey, that's what it's all about. So with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video.